Welcome to Marathon Swim Stories, where we explore the human side of the superhuman feats of endurance swimmers and those who support them. As part of the human side, it's important to me to highlight the fact that marathon swimming isn't always about setting records, pioneering routes, completing iconic swims, or checking off those on the list like the Triple Crown or Ocean Seven. It's about pushing yourself finding out what you're capable of, and finding your personal limits. Today's guest swims marathons because she can. Janine Sorrell found her happy place in marathon swimming midlife, and she's on a mission to find her limit. Even at around nine hours, her longest swim to date, she's still happy, so she wants more. Today's deep dive episode is the first in a four-part series of Janine's journey to swim the 21-mile length of Lake Tahoe. If you haven't already, be sure to catch Janine's marathon swim story. She was one of my early guests way back in April 2020. I hope you enjoy following Janine's journey. <laughs> Thank you, Janine, for being our our guest in a four part jo- journey. Janine's journey to Tahoe. I'm super excited, <laughs> and this is this is an experiment, so we're making it up as we go along. But we did um, brainstorm a little bit on topics to cover, and if there's ever anything that you guys want to hear from, definitely email me so I can make sure and ask. And one of our sessions, we'll try to keep it though to an hour today, and um, we'll see how it's going. Um, let's see what else. Oh yeah, I guess the other thing I'm I'm hoping to get a little a little um, a little podcast or something recorded with this, but it um, I just kind of want to emphasize my whole goal with marathon swim stories and that it really isn't um, about being the fast or the first or the pioneer or the this or the that. It's about just challenging yourself and doing something that's a little bit big and scary. And um, so I think I was tossing around the motto with, with Janine and Gia about um, it's, it's not about success or failure. It's about, it's about starting. It's about looking at some big scary thing and, and challenging yourself and seeing what you learn along the way. And that is what Janine's going to, I think, be sharing with us as part of her journey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited. So tell us, tell us what, um, what brought you to this um, goal. Tell us what your goal is first, and then we'll just break it down from there. Because we're um, new. Oh, I do want to mention, though, we did hear Janine's story before, back in April. She was one of my early, like April was my first month of interviews. <laughs> so if you want Janine's back, whole backstory, that is recorded in an April 30th interview um, from 2020. 20. So we're coming up on a year of her recording her story, but um, <laughs> I guess not really. It's only February. <laughs> but um, let's let's hear about this, Janine. What brought you to um, what's this big hairy goal you're attempting? <laughs> uh, yeah. So Lake Tahoe. Um, so there's so three never, routes, right? There's, there's three, three different routes. routes. There's uh, the width, which is about 10 miles. And then there's a the Godfather, which is 12 and a half. And then there's the length, which is around 22 mm-hmm. uh, miles. So 2019, I go out to swim the width. So I didn't really want to go. <laughs> To be quite honest, um, I have a friend, Susan Kirk, who many of you may know, um, who really was like, no, let's go, let's go swim. It's beautiful, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, it's cold, it's altitude, it's night. It's like all the things I didn't think I wanted to do um, without actually having done it, Mm -hmm. uh, which is probably the first good life lesson we (laughs) might hear of, like stop saying no to things you've not actually tried. (laughs) Right. And uh, we went out there and it was beautiful. We, uh, we swam the Godfather. So we did the medium size route and it was beautiful. I was in love. I, it was a perfect night and there was a moon and, you know, uh, Tom was our guide, I guess. The pilot, yeah. um, Lynn Goldsmith came out and paddled. And so there was all these great people around and it was, It was a beautiful swim. And I haven't felt like that in a while. Mm -hmm. Um, 
that I was like, oh, I want to go back and do this. And honestly, yeah. I've never had an urge on a, you know, to go swim a channel. I've never had an urge to do anything that was over 10 hours. Okay. Where I was like, oh, I want to do that. It's worth like that kind of time. Um, so you didn't want to go, you had, there's nothing you'd wanted to go back to before. And there's nothing you wanted to swim for more than 10 hours, supposedly, right? But yeah, how long did it take you? multiple times that I could enjoy, but <laughs> okay. yeah. Okay. Not the big, hard, stupid, you know. Stuff. Right. Yeah. So what, going into this, what was your longest swim? I guess going, going, excuse me. What was your time for the, the length that you did? Oh, the width was, um, I don't know, it was eight and change. I, I don't know exactly. It wasn't like, I wasn't gutting for anything. I was just kind of, you know, forever pace. I'm yeah. good at that. That is, one, that is one of the things I'm good at. I'm not like an excellent sprinter. I'm not fast but I can dial in a pace and hold it. Nice. Yeah, that's good. Um, okay. And then, um, oh, I forgot my question. Okay. Keep going. So, so, so you, so you, you liked it. You liked Tahoe. I loved it. I loved <laughs> it. And I don't know if how long I waited. I don't know if I did it when I was there or like within a couple of weeks and I was like, all right, I want, <laughs> I'm a little bit of a, uh, planner control freak person and so I downloaded I found and downloaded three years of daily water temperatures mm -hmm. yeah for Tahoe and then I super and then on the spreadsheet I also added the moon faces because mm -hmm. I was like I want I want moonlight I want something warmer uh for 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 something that's going to be really long and I went back to Tom and I was like, oh, here's the dates. I'd like, you know, I want to reserve something for next year. Right. And that would have been 2020. Mm -hmm. Of course. Um, what were the temps when you did the width or the? It was height? between 61 and 63. Yeah. And it was fine. Like I wasn't, towards the end, I started to get a little cold, my toes. Mm -hmm. And my friend Lynn was like, well, perhaps if you kicked a bit, <laughs> it kicks <laughs> overrated. <laughs> Probably said something back to her, not suitable. <laughs> to, to, and and um, off I went and <laughs> tried to warm up my. It was just like my toes were starting to get a little cold at the yeah. end, but it wasn't anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so you booked for 2020. Obviously, 2020 didn't happen. So, did Tom just help you roll it over? How did that go? Yeah, he just rolled it over. He was really fine. And quite frankly, you know, in hindsight, I kind of just pretty quick walked away. Mm. Not sure. I don't know. So it was like, well, can't get to the pool. Got to. And so I did say to myself for this year, like, you know. You know, you know, you'll figure out a way. So yeah. if you wind up losing a pool or whatever, like, yeah. uh, you know, come hell or high water, I'll figure it out. I can, yeah, I can empathize with that a lot because I did the same thing. I was like, oh, this is too hard. Just like, <laughs> tossed all my goals for 2020. And then I was like, wait a second. It's just not this, not have to be this way, especially because there's out there people doing amazing things like Caroline and countless other people just out there just killing it. I'm like, what, what, what about access? <laughs> <laughs> I'll find a way. It's awesome. Yep. So, um, awesome. So we, so you're booked, you're ready. And our date for 2021 is July 29th slash 30th. Perfect. Yeah. And the water's probably like mid upper sixties. 65 to 67. If history holds mm -hmm. depends on how much snow melt they get. Right. Right. Of course. Um, yeah. But that's fine. I, I feel confident that I can do that temperature without mm -hmm. drama for a length of time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so then going into, so you've planned it, you've booked it. We know why you just loved it. <laughs> so you're going back. <laughs> um, so how are you, how did you start um, deciding to prepare yourself? What, what was that like? What is that like? You mean the training part? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, training <laughs> or coaching or like, what did you decide right. to do now, next? Um, at the end of 2019, the only coach I had ever worked with um, was sort of off to go do different stuff in his life. 
Mm. And he's like, you're, you're, you're good. You know what you're doing, <laughs> um, which to some degree was true. And so I had started to coach myself during 2020, um, which I, you know, I gave myself maybe a C plus at best. <laughs> I, found, I found it easier to not do something that I, that I told myself to do versus so I went looking for a new coach and I um, decided on Charlotte Bryn, mm-hmm. which yeah. was, we had a nice uh, conversation after she finished her Lake George swim about what this would look like and some options. And mm-hmm. so that was um, great. And I, yeah. it's a great fit for me. Yeah. And that's so important. And that like, just going back to that kind of self-coaching, I think there are people that are totally capable of that, but, um, but having someone that can keep you accountable to a plan or even helping you give you feedback on a plan like that is, that is invaluable. I think, um, um, uh, the other thing I was going to say, it was just that, um, like finding that, that good fit is super important. And there are lots of people out there that, um, you know, that, that at least can help you like with that, I guess, kind of like, even if you put your own plan together and there's a lot, I think Ned has a whole mentor group out there that people can kind of lean on if they're looking for help with marathon swimming. Um, I don't know if you knew about that, Ned Dennison, there's like this whole like marathon swimming um, mentors. In 2020, I sat down and I made what I thought was a good plan and and it was. (laughs) And I went through it with some other friends who have done some big swims Mm -hmm. and, and said, what do you think? Here's my progression, here's the yards, blah, blah, blah. And so I had confidence in the plan. Mm-hmm. It just wasn't, I don't know, somebody else handing me, here's your workout every day is, um, makes me happy. And yeah. I'm a big fan of you spend your money on what makes you happy. Like I'd rather have somebody doing that than, you know, buying the Italian shoes. <laughs> right, yeah, I'm with, I'm with you on that. <laughs> Yeah, um, I was thinking of this too. Just, I read this book um, called The Four Tendencies, and it's like um, the upholder is like the person that can make a plan with themselves and like keep it. <laughs> and, and 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 then there's like I'm myself. I'm like an obliger. Like I make a plan, but I'm not really like unless I'm someone's expecting me to like be somewhere. It may or may not happen. And then the other two is like the questioner, which is totally my husband and um, the rebel, which is the, like, you can't make me do anything and I can't either or something like that as a motto for it. It's a fun, fun little book about, about tendencies anyway. <laughs> but it's good to know that about yourself. That you're it like, is good. Um, you know, like you need a, like for each of us who you need as a coach is different and it may change over time. That's true. Too, too, yeah. Like, yeah. you know, when I first started, like I would, to my first coach and I was like, I'd like to swim this and I don't know how to get from here to there. Right. Right. Yeah. And now it's less about, I don't know how to get from here to there than, you know, somebody gives me my homework every day. That's right. And it yeah. feels like this is my job now. So. Yeah. 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 Speaking of that, do you have any other things going on besides your swim focus this year? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. That's um, awesome. I'm retired. So I don't right. have to, uh, do anything else that I don't want to do. Yay. <laughs> That's lovely. <laughs> uh, yeah. So what, um, so you're at February. What do you, do you have any, how's like your plan set up for the year? Do you have any? Um, I don't like to act. Oh, you mean uh, besides like, oh, like how am I train like other events? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you have any other training events, things? or? Um, so I'm used to training you know, yards in the pool, blah, blah, blah. And then I usually lay in a whole bunch of events to sort of mm-hmm. train into the big swim of the year, mm-hmm. which um, can't really happen this year. This year, yeah. So we can't count on it happening mm-hmm. is probably a better way of putting it. Um, and this swim being in July gives me s- some time. So uh, I've put on the calendar that I'm going to go off and do something maybe four or five hours long in April. And um, I haven't quite figured out the details. I haven't done any details actually on that yet, which um, there's some lakes, probably about three or four hours. I'm located in Charleston. The lakes around here have gators. So if you go about four or five hours north, I won't be will- need to swim for my life. <laughs> That's um, so, but in May, I... Uh, 
I've never gone longer than nine hours. And I think if, you know, weather is perfect, maybe Tahoe is a 16 hour swim. I don't know. I've never, like I said, I've never gone longer than nine hours. So I'm not mm -hmm. really sure like at what point my, my performance is really steady in that nine hours. Like I, I know what that pace is and I know what I can maintain. I don't know at what point it falls off. And, mm -hmm. I, and I've crewed enough long swims to see that happen. So it's not about if, but when. Okay. So in May, I've got um, some friends who have agreed to come with me to Lake Jocasse, which is on the border of North and South Carolina. And it's a beautiful, beautiful crystal clear lake. Melinda um, yeah. um, does a lot of training there. And so I've talked to her and she's been really helpful. And I rented uh, a cabin for f three or four days and they've agreed to each, to support me doing a 12 hour swim. So I can at least, you know, get over the 10 hours mm -hmm. and each of them will do a four hour kayak with me, which seems a reasonable amount to ask somebody to sit in a kayak versus 12 hours. <laughs> um, and it's kind of expanded. So I have some other friends who are coming down to do some of their training too. Um, and it's nice because it's a state park and there's cabins and campgrounds. So everybody can kind of be in their own space and do their plan their own thing. And yet there's others of us around, which is also kind of nice. Yeah, I, totally. I am a social swimmer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Even if it's like heading out for another lap, it's nice to be like, hi, okay, get going. <laughs> yeah. Maybe around the fire put afterwards, <laughs> which would be lovely. So, yes. so um, that's probably the biggest, that's in May. In June, you know, everything working out and I'm vaccinated and things work out. I'm hopefully going to go up and do, uh, I have a 10K or 10 mile, I forgot, in Memphre. Oh. And I think I am going to try and get a double Willoughby in as a training run before. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah. Um, and you might get some waves and things like that, which are good. <laughs> Um, yeah, I need to get slapped around by yeah. and Willoughby's, you know, She's good Memphis also excellent at providing that activity. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so I, you know, so I'm, for the first time, I'm sort of having to plan. I can't just, you know, sign up for an event. I have to figure this out and mm -hmm. sort of pull it together a bit myself, which is fine. Um, so that's kind of, you know, it's a little vague still, mm -hmm. but I, there's not much else you can do about it. It's real. A lot of this is going to come down to getting vaccinated mm -hmm. yeah. and being able to go to this state or that state or have people being able, like, you can't ask somebody to, you know, kayak next to you when you just drop in from somewhere and be like, oh, don't worry, you know, it's going to be okay. It's not, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little bit of a tricky situation, but I think that, I think that the pilots and a lot of crew people have really, you know, kind of adapted and realized, you know, like swimming itself is safe as long as, you know, you're keeping distance and we're able to, you know, I don't know. It's been amazing to me to see how the, some of the pilots have adapted and been able to continue offering these swims, even despite the pandemic. So feel fortunate for that. But I just, like you said, we have to be a little more creative in our training. <laughs> and you know, the people in your bubble already, you know, you got to train, you got to support them in what they're doing. One of the girls who I train with here in South Carolina is also coming up. She's going to paddle for me and then I'll support her, but she wants to get in some long training swim. So you, you, yep. you, you figure it out. Yeah. Yep. Um, did you have any trouble with the altitude the first time around there? I didn't. Um, I, I was told to go in four days beforehand and I went in four days beforehand. And um, it was sort of shot. I, I, I've experienced altitude before, so I kind of knew what was coming at me. Mm -hmm. um, so Susan and I went out there a couple of days earlier and we were fine after, you know, when I jumped in, I was fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like altitude is one of those things that's just some people are really affected by it and other people aren't really so just yeah the first fun. couple of days I was really but I knew that you know by day four and by day four I was fine and I think the other thing for me is 
when I swim, I swim a forever pace. I am not out of breath. I yeah. swim the way people hike is how I describe it. Like, yeah, exactly. So if I had to be, you know, somebody said, we're going to do like a three mile swim race. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. the alpha clue would have been more of an issue. But right. This- yeah. Like little bits of oxygen here and there. You're good. <laughs> and I do a lot of, you know, breathe five, breathe seven and when I'm training anyway. Okay, good. I'm doing that with child because I didn't know what was going to come at me. And, you know, when you're doing long sets, it gives you something else to pay attention. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I appreciate that too. The, the doing that breath training, it just is a way to, you know, get some more yards and <laughs> doing the thousand yards <laughs> every five for a hundred, every seven for a hundred, every, yeah. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Um, so what other components of, yeah. What other um, components of your training? Do you have any dry land or land sports or anything else in there besides uh, yeah, besides swimming? Um, I usually walk the beach another, you know, three miles a day most days. Um, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it's part of it. And um, this is the first time where I have a coach who's giving me dry land. So I probably do uh, half an hour, four times a week that okay. Charlotte directs. Mm-hmm. Um which is great. Yeah. You know, yeah. Cause that's my favorite part. <laughs> You're not so favorite part. <laughs> but I do it cause it's on the plan and I got to click it off and yes, <laughs> it gets done. That's great. Have you noticed any changes in your swimming when, with adding that dry land in? Uh, yeah, I would say, um, you know, I, I'm certainly, um, you know, I'm putting in, 32,000 meters, which is a lot for me for February. It's a lot higher than I've been before, but I I don't wake up super sore or broken or stressed. And so I think I am stronger. Um, And I'm swimming times that are usually for me to hit these times, I got to be 20 pounds lighter. Oh, So yeah, it's always for me a very different balance because I tend to like, January 1st until the first, you know, until my big swim, I focus on, you know, losing weight because it makes me faster. Mm. Uh, And then, you know, the other four months I eat cake. (laughs) (laughs) It's a, it's an eight, four kind of thing. (laughs) I love it. I love it. Is there any nutrition guidance or anything in your coaching plan? <laughs> no. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, that's a, that part is all is all for me. And I think that that's a hard, I don't know. I think people's bodies are very different about what foods react to them well or not. And mm-hmm. but I will what I will say from a swimming perspective, perspective and nutrition, um, I think, you know, I think we all have things that we're really good at. I have never puked. No, oh, that's great. Well, see if we can puking. break that record this year. <laughs> and so I can remember when I was going to do my very first, you know, feeding big kids swim. Um, somebody said to me, well, if you got to puke, don't, you know, do it underwater. Don't let them see you. And I thought, oh God, how do you train for that? <laughs> and I was like, okay, you, you got to little let that go. Cause I don't think you can train for that. <laughs> Um, but I, I kind of feel like this could be a different experience. Um, now I think the answer for me is bringing lots of options because Mm -hmm. I don't think I can possibly figure this out beforehand, really. I mean, I have, um, I use hammer and I like that and that works good. Um, I use goo sometimes and that works good. And I think for me, I'm going to have to get some solid food. I I just kind of feel like the sugar thing is going to be too much after a while. And so, um, you know, I fed Charlotte mashed potatoes on her swim across Lake George and that looked yummy. So I'm thinking, (laughs) (laughs) Carol was like, like, yes. so stuff like that's savory, but has some carbs to it, mm-hmm. I, I feel could be in my wheelhouse, um, but it also shouldn't be so complicated. Yeah. Um, I just tried maple syrup in the pool the other day. I had a long set and I was like, oh, 
and it's a little package. And I was like, oh, that was yummy and not quite so, um, you know, too much sugar that gives you that spike. I get yeah. spiked on some of this stuff. Yeah. So I need stuff that's a little slow burn. And I also need stuff that doesn't taste yucky. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I'm with you. I had a toddler once say to me, like, I hate you under your feet because it you make that face. And I was like, oh, I'll find a new feed next season. Because it was great. It didn't spike me, but it was gritty and I didn't like the taste of it. So, you know, I was like, oh, that was a lesson learned. So yeah. I think there's, I think having options on the boat is the way to go. I, I, yeah. And warm feeds. Yes. Um, yeah. Will also be nice. Um, and, you know, having crewed a few of like Jamie Monaghan swims, like I was like, oh, I've learned how, like, what is the proper vessel for keeping hot water on a boat that you have no way to boil water? So, you know, I, all these different crewing and observing experiences give you so many different ideas of how to do this and what you can do. Like going out with Steve and Eric when they jumped in to uh, attempt Molokai was mm. also another one of those things of all the different foods and options. Yeah. 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 And especially when you're looking at 16 hours, I do think, I mean, yeah. And it, it is different for everybody. Cause I've heard some people say like, don't even bother with um, I've, just things I've read, you know, like don't yeah. bother with solid feeds on a swim if it's going to be cold because it takes more calories to digest solids but like for me I get so tired of drinking liquids I'm like give me something I can just even just chew for a second like you know even if you're chewing it while you're swimming or whatever like I just kind of my mouth gets tired of just <laughs> like sucking um, yeah. I mean I tasted I was teasing somebody who was like well I'm gonna have this and that and I'm like it's not a buffet like it's cool to get through it but yet there's a balance. Between there's a balance people. and having something to look forward to. Like, I think some people yeah. talk about like the, like a five or six hours in to have, you know, like this feed that you look forward to. And I think that's a really great recommendation too. Agreed. Um, I also, um, I'm going to switch it. I'm going to try this in May, but I, I'm feeling pretty positive that I'm probably going to go from 30 to 40 minutes on my feet. So oh, I'm going to yeah. move longer because I'm not swimming all out. I'm not mm. burning 8,000 calories an hour. Right. I don't need that much. Yeah. I hear what you're saying. One of somebody had kind of tuned me in this to another one is a uh, like that because if it's colder that water though, you might be burning more calories to keep warm. So you might want to just be flexible always. <laughs> pack, pack plenty of food and plenty of options, but yeah. I'm going to try it in May and go for uh, 40, 40 minutes. And that water will be about 65. Okay. So That's it's going to be pretty good simple. practice. Yeah. Um, Tahoe and that, that should give me a, that's one thing I think I can walk away from that training swim and yeah. be like, Ooh, 40 minutes is good. 30 minutes is not good. Um, right. Well, and I, I like it being flexible though, even in the moment, cause I guess I've gotten to a point in, during a swim where I need the connection every 30 minutes, even if I don't need the feed. So I'd be like, I just want to be like, hi, <laughs> okay. Good to see you. I'm going to go swim again. So you know, being flexible. <laughs> Good point. I do like to talk during my swims, but you know. it's not a chatty chat. So just a... captains are never happy about this. Uh, Tom's different though. <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> Him. He knows, you know, we're probably in the same similar speed category. So he knows. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Oh, that's all good. Good info. Um, what about uh, what about strengths and weaknesses? Kind of going in. I think we touched on a little bit, but we'll just focus on it for a minute. What are your strengths? Um, strengths. Uh, well, I said I have no issue with feeding. Um, <laughs> feel confident uh, at sixty-five degrees for 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 a chunk of time. Mm -hmm. um, I'm good at pacing. Um, I train well. I don't think I overtrain, but. I believe you train hard and swim easy. Mm. I have a friend, John, who has this theory that all swims are X amount of pain. And you can either have it little tiny bits when you train properly over months, or you can not train up enough and have it all one day. <laughs> I think there's some truth to that, that if you train properly, you know, your swim will, should be happy. Mm. Um, I have a great team. Like I, I don't get on, I don't get 
on a boat or in like, I, I've now swam with Tom. That was the first time I met him. I have high confidence. And because I was both the swimmer and then I crewed Susan Kirk's swim and been on the boat with Tom. You know, I, I've seen it from both sides and I'm like, I, you know, I always say like, I'm not a great swimmer. I'm not gonna, I, I can get through, I may be able to get through my part of it. I definitely am not good enough to do your jobs too. Right. <laughs> the navigation or the feeding or whatever else is going on. And I I don't sight, I don't, I I swim. Right. Um, and some people, I, I remember when I finished Manhattan, I had never met Alex before the day he paddled for me from Manhattan. And when I walked up to him, I'm like, here's my feet. And I'm like, I don't, I don't sight, I don't look, I'm just following you blindly. So <laughs> and afterwards he said to me, he's like, you know, swimmers say that all the time. He's like, you may be the first swimmer who actually never looked. <laughs> I don't, you know, I'm going to breathe right and you're going to be there and I'm going to follow you. So I think having a team that you're completely confident in mm-hmm. gives you the energy to focus on your part of this instead mm-hmm. of trying to, you know, like even if you see this, you know, a lot of talking or, you know, as a swimmer, you see this activity on the boat and in your head, you're going, but you don't have to stop. Right. 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 You can just swim. Um, And I think that I have a good mental game. I, I, I think that I can, you know, even when I go negative, it doesn't, it doesn't stay long. Um, at some point in any long swim, there's a little thing that's like, oh, do you really want to keep doing this? And I'm like, oh, you know what? You just spent six months of your life for this moment. So shut that up and, and enjoy it. You know, enjoy that moment. Um, and I, so I think those are my strengths. <laughs> Weaknesses, um, I, ha- I, don't, I don't, I have no speed. I have a forever speed, you know, maybe if the Staten Island Ferry is coming my way or something, I can pick it up for a bit, but I I don't have a lot of, you know, speed. I have a forever pace. Um, I don't know. What are my other weaknesses? Um, I always, not always, almost every one of my long swims, if it's an event, I'm either, I'm almost always last or second to last. And I feel like... I'm always signing up for the, like hanging on by a thread of my abilities, right? So I'm really pushing the envelope of what I can physically do that I'm trained to or experienced enough to do. Um, I don't know if that's a strength or a weakness, but it's, it's always going to be a tight, <laughs> it's going to be, no, it's going to be a cliffhanger. There's no, like, I don't sign up for stuff that I can like, oh yeah, I got that. I never, you know, I'm not saying I don't have confidence. Sounds like it's on your mind though. (laughs) Right. Okay. I don't know. I think there's probably just the lack of speed and, (laughs) but you're pushing yourself, but you're signing up specifically to push yourself for this. Yeah. I mean, after swimming Tahoe, I was like, oh, I want to go the length. This was such a beautiful experience. And I, I finally saw something that I was like, you know, I, 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 I've never seen the English channel, so I'm going to withhold judgment there and not say no. Uh, I've both crewed and done a um, relay in Catalina. And I was like, this is not calling, it's not calling my name. Mm-hmm. That's okay. Um, this is the first thing I was like, oh. And I've sort of discovered that in the last couple of years, I really like lakes. Mm-hmm. So there's some other new ones that, you know, go on the wish list. And once you sort of are like, oh, this is a new place that I'm really enjoying. Because when you lived in New York City, it's, you know, you got the harbor and you got the ocean. It's not a lake place. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. I was happy when 
I, I don't think of myself as a list person, but when they created the Stillwater Eight, I was like, well, maybe there's a chance for me. <laughs> but then looking at them, I don't, I don't know if I can get to Russia <laughs> anyway. But I was glad that they were accommodating some lake people. But it's, it, I love talking to people how there is some people who are just so in love with the sea and some people who are just lake people, and it's, I don't know, it's lovely. Good thing. There's all different kinds of people out there. <laughs> I love swimming too. So I would never say like, uh, you know, I'm always going to be in a lake. There's something right. about swimming and seeing buildings and yeah. other urban swims that I think are really cool that I haven't participated in yet. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I, I'm with you. Urban swims, it helps you kind of check things off too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, what about um, what kind of, so we, you talked a little bit about kind of nutrition that you're preparing for and you're going to do some trial nutrition and come May. Um, is there any other kind of comforts that you seek or set yourself up for kind of while you swim or as you're training or? I'm going to say no. Like I don't, I don't, when I'm training, I'm pretty focused mm -hmm. um like <laughs> if somebody comes and tries to you know comes into the lane or like sticks like a board in to be like I'm gonna come in I usually stop and scream and not <laughs> because I'm so in my own head that I'm not really paying attention to what's going on um I don't know. I've gotten to the point now where I'm starting to bring breakfast with me. So part of the way through, I'm like, ooh, either, you know, noon or 7,000 meters. Whoever comes first, I get to eat breakfast. And I'll stand there in the pool and like eat my little breakfast, which, but I don't, I, treats and, and like, I don't listen to music. I'm very, and I train alone. Mm -hmm. You know, for the most part, I do masters once, maybe twice a week, but that's, you know, maybe 10% of my yards, the rest of it, it's me. Mm -hmm. Do you have any focus on technique or any stroke work or anything that you do? Oh yeah. We're always going. <laughs> I, I'm, ready to, I'm ready to see somebody be like, no, I'm, I'm, I got it. <laughs> like perfect stroke. I don't think it exists. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no. uh, I'm always working. Uh, so um, I swing when I, when I, is my stroke. It's, there's no high elbows, which is great for me. And it works for my body. And it also works for open water because you don't have that thing where like your, your elbows up and you're, and you're getting hit by waves. Mm -hmm. You come in on the side. It doesn't, the downside of that kind of stroke is that the rotation is less. So mm. I'm, I'm, there's a little bit of barge and a little less sailboat. Okay. <laughs> um, so I'm always working on rotation and I'm always working on trying to grab a little more water. I have, um, I have, I have childlike hands. <laughs> <laughs> They're small and not very, uh, but I spin fast. So my last, so Tahoe two years ago, I think the I think my stroke rate was like 71, 72 the whole time. Wow. And I'm not trying to make it fast mm -hmm. per se. That's just what it is. Um, but what that tells you is you're not grabbing a whole lot of water either. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. On the other hand, these people, you know, people are grabbing water. I kind of feel like, well, that could be putting a lot of stress on your shoulders too. So I don't know. But I'm trying to kick a little bit more and I'm trying to rotate a little bit better. <laughs> and my head position is good and I ride high in the water. So that part works well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Um, I would say, <laughs> just have to throw this in the people who with the, with the longer strokes, they're probably using their backs more than their shoulders. If they're, if they're doing That's it right. right. <laughs> yeah. They're just uh, beautiful. Like when you see somebody who's like those long, tall swimmers, <laughs> And, and they're just, it's beautiful to watch. Like if you've ever seen like Rondi Davies or mm. John Umanic, like just, uh, just some of these people and you're just like, it's a whole different level of grace and power. Mm -hmm. yeah. That is just stud. It's almost like ballet. I yeah. think it's yeah. stunning to watch. I never going to be there. <laughs> I'm okay with that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm just looking back through some of the questions in the chat. Um, Ta uh, Caroline was asking about like that, you know, that Tahoe does seem to make people puke. And I was, I was wondering the time, what time did you leave last time for your swim? Oh, uh, 
Um, hmm. We finished around noon, so I don't want. I want to say maybe two o'clock in the morning. morning. I don't really remember, but I'm going to say. I mean, we start. It was definitely night when we started. It was dark, dark, right? Um, and it was light when we finished. So I'm going to say <laughs> around two or three in the morning. I wonder if that makes a difference. And I hope to start. I haven't talked to Tom about this yet, but I would like to do as much of this in the dark that I can. So I would love to start at like eight or nine. And they then, usually do just because of boat traffic on time right, because it could get crazy. Stuff, yeah. yeah, yeah, um, yeah. When I did the length, we started at I think eight at night, um, and it. But yeah, and I didn't. I did have trouble with kind of keeping feeds down, which was the first time I had experienced that. But it had, and I don't know that it's specifically altitude so much as like I really hadn't done an overnight swim before like and we just I? <laughs> yeah my pilot was just like well you know your body is not really used to eating kind of all night and I'm like trying to force feeds down and swim and you know it wasn't something I'd really trained for but I don't I don't I don't know if that's it some people say it's because of the you can't really see the horizon because of the because it's dark but there's I don't know there's a lot of lights um I, so, anyway I don't know the answer to, <laughs> to Caroline's question it does seem to come up with Tahoe I think it's probably more that people aren't used to new they're newer to that overnight kind of experience newer to the you know could be maybe the altitude or it could be um whatever other there there are some it gets lumpy there's like some weird currents in there that um it does get a little lumpy but not like nothing that you would expect to I, did, I have never felt nauseous swimming anyway I, yeah that's so great. I don't know, and I've been on boats where I've not been the swimmer, but I've been on boats and literally like three quarters of the people are over. <laughs> yeah. And so I think that, I also think there's something in me that's pretty stable about when when it gets right. rocking. Right. I can't guarantee it won't happen. I've also yeah. heard plenty of people be like, I was, I'd never done it, you know, for 10 years of swimming and then this no, All of a sudden, yeah, <laughs> right. So. It's a rite of passage. It's just something to look forward to. <laughs> something I've yet to achieve in this world. <laughs> um, someone was asking us about the, if there are, if you want to tell us a little bit more about the types of dry land workouts that you do. Oh, um, hmm. I have uh, mean balls, the big one and the Bosa ball. So I do a lot of crunching, um, a lot of strengthening of my core. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Not too much on like lifting and shoulder stuff because- right. It's, it's a lot of yards that I'm putting on, but most yeah. of it is really core, front and back yeah. and, and crunching and those kind of things. That's you know, some, some squats, some lunges, you know, nothing. I, I don't know that it's specialized to swimming as much as fitness. Um, right. You know, I think there's a difference between being swim fit and being fit fit. And most of the time I'm pretty good on my swim fit. I'm mm -hmm. not so good on my fit fit. So. Yeah. Um, do you do any kind of complimentary shoulder stretching or, you know, like those minor muscle groups, do you strengthen any of those to complement your major muscle groups that you're using? I when do, you're I do a little time? band stuff. So if that's okay. doing yeah. that, that'll be fine. I think the one that I, the one that I always feel like helps with my, the little muscles in my shoulders and maybe I'm wrong because I don't really know a lot about this, hence the coach. <laughs> um, I find sculling feels like I work my little muscle groups and I always try and even if it's not on the on the workout, I usually get a little sculling in every day because I feel like there's something about that motion that feels like it gets the little muscles better than some of the other things do for me. It's fun too. Fun way to break things up when you're doing, you said 32,000 meters for February, total February? No, per week. Per week. <laughs> <It's> incredible. <laughs> you know, it's, I, like I said, I'd rather train hard and swim than easy. Yeah. And I'm not, I feel good. I feel strong. I'm not feeling like, like my body's under stress. Mm -hmm. So, and we haven't gone up more than a thousand or two in a week, you know? So it's. Wait, say that again. You haven't done more than. A... I haven't gone up more than a thousand. Oh, up two. more than a thousand. Yeah. So okay. it's not like there's been these big jumps. It's been a nice steady, gradual, um, and I think the other thing for me, and I'm getting maybe closer to getting over this, age groupers have, you know, 10, 15, 20 years on their bodies. Mm, I ah. just, I have 11 years now. You know, it's not, 
And there is, I think, something to that. I think that. Yeah, yeah. So you're making home. up for lost time. I'm always, I'm trying to re- fix all the things that I ingrained in myself as an age group swimmer. <laughs> but I'm you're fresh because, and you're, yeah. Yeah, it's the other way, which is I don't have that. Right? Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So. I love it. <clears throat> I don't know if I have any more questions. Anything else you want to tell us? We're going to check back in with Janine in around April or May. So give her a couple months to work with this 32,000 yards, <laughs> meters a week. <laughs> and her dry land and her nutrition testing. I will have to see the timing of that. Maybe we should do it right after your your May swim or something. I don't know. Fine. Yeah, so we can hear how it goes. Yeah. To look back at our schedule. Very cool. Any questions for Janine today? Her first in her journey to Lake Tahoe. No questions, but I just want to thank you for coming. It was it, it's really interesting, and I hope I look forward to the next program. Thanks, uh, Diane. <laughs> oh, Judith wants to know how the water is in the ocean right now, where you're at. Fifty three. <laughs> Oh. Um, and as cloudy as ever and um it's i go in probably once a week and frolic I, I i've gathered people for sundays to frolic um so that's been going and i think we're gonna start heading out to the tiny lake i was funny i was talking to the swim spouse yesterday and i was like "Ooh, when can we start going to the tiny lake and i think in about a month, it should be maybe hitting 60, 61. So we can, so some of those like crazy, like eight, nine, 10,000 meter days, I can start shifting some of that out of the dungeon pool. I have two pools. One is very pretty and lovely, but it's always 25 yards. And the other one's 50 meters and it's dank and dark and 50 I'm, meters, but dank and dark. Okay. <laughs> and so, but I can start switching some of that, I think, out of the dungeon and into the tiny lake, which is about, uh, I think it's about 600 yards long. It was man made for water skiing. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's great. That would be nice. I can imagine that. Do you long, do you long for the open water in the pool for 32,000 yards a week? I do and I don't. I, I know me, I, I need structure, I need a clock. Like I get out into the open water and I'm like, oh, la di da, there's my pretty arm and oh, look at the fishy. Like I'm, I, I do more daydream and it's less like, so um, I like a balance between the two. And as I come closer to the event, I want less pool, more open water. But at this time of year, no, I need, I, need, I need structure, it's like, Going, I, I think of this as going to school. It is, this is your, this is your homework. This is what you got to get done. You know, the clock is your grades. It's, and come summer, it's time to play. Yeah. Uh, Caroline's wondering, do you know your, what your max training weeks will be if you're doing 32,000 now? I don't. I have to say <laughs> that because uh, I think uh, I usually have a conversation with Charlotte once a month. We Zoom and chat and how things are going and blah, blah, blah. And that is on my list of next month's conversation because I, I don't think we knew in the beginning because she didn't know me and I didn't know her. But I think, you know, and I, I, the problem is come April or May, we're going to start doing more open water, right? Mm-hmm. So it gets less structured. I, I don't know. <laughs> the, I, the rule of thumb is always, I've always heard is you swim in a week, so what your event sure. is. What you can, yeah. Right? But I'm pretty close to my event. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's what... And it's February. So hence, I think it's good to have, I think we'll be having that discussion. Yeah. Soon. <laughs> Well, that is a good note to leave it on. I can't wait to find out what's going to happen next in Janine's journey to Tahoe. <laughs> Thank you all for, yeah, thanks for coming today. We'll talk to you guys again later. <laughs> Bye. I hope you enjoyed today's interview. Do you want to take Marathon Swim Stories with you? Subscribe on your favorite podcast provider. Want to connect with like-minded limit pushers? Join us for Marathon Swim Stories Live on Tuesdays at 5.30 a.m. Pacific, 8.30 Eastern, 13.30 GMT. Thanks for watching.